Is that a freaking bear? He's huge. Oh, he's huge. All right, guys, we're on location today, building a playground. Uh, if you've been following the channel for a long time, you probably know where I'm at. If you don't, well, you'll have to wait. I'll share exactly where we are. So most playgrounds online are between a thousand and like three thousand dollars. I think we could make this one work reasonably for about six hundred bucks without being too obnoxious with it. Decks are more expensive than that. So this is gonna be a big piece of the backyard. And we've partnered with Flexil to make sure that this playground can withstand all the weather that we throw at it. So we're going for this pyramid shape uh, playground here. I'm not that great with math, so I'm gonna dummy it out first. To find my angle here, I'm just overlapping them. I'll cut a scrap piece off so they'll have something to secure from each side evenly. And then at that point, we can start raising the structures up. Let's get to cutting. The only reason I'm cutting them all down six inches, well, because I need one block and I'm not gonna have this thing be all side sitting like a low rider. Got our angles figured out, let's start cutting them. Beautiful part about awkward cuts, you now have a template. All four pieces are cut to what angle? Uh, whatever angle this is, I don't know. Uh, use the HP series from Ryobi. It did not bite on me once. Didn't bog down. Finally, a miter saw that's affordable, that's very powerful. Go pick one up, you'll like it. Let's start putting these pieces together. Look at these, five inches. It's a giant. Oh, that'll do. Mm, I was thinking about screwing the screws from the side here, but I think there's just gonna be, amongst what I wanna build, it's gonna be way too much. So the prettiest way, which is always the harder way and the more annoying way, is put pocket hole screws on the insides of this thing. It'll look so much better. Getting a little sketchy out here. Playground done. Should be safe, right? Maybe I should have started building in the right place. I think I can't let this thing go. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll just put a temporary screw in. And now I'm just gonna take a little bit off the top. That's a flat top. That's good. It look real good. Happy to admit, got my first screw up. This piece is not supposed to be there. It's supposed to go this way. So, I hate angles. I have to figure out what the angle is and cut it and we'll attach it this way. I'm done with trying to, I'm done with trying to be smart, okay? I'm just gonna be done. Folks, I am way too stupid to do this level of math. I have two angles I have to deal with, this and that. Can't do it. Didn't do that well in school. Instead, I'm just gonna stick to one angle, 145 degree. It's gonna go in nice. I'm not gonna have any issues. It's just not gonna flow with this angle. Lots of angles. I kind of want to put like a tire swing down below here, nice and low. You know, so like you just hit your head against all this stuff and get a nice, nicely well concussed so you don't have to get that in sports. So this part right here is going to be the rock climbing section. You know, you grab and pull yourself up. I cannot for the life of me figure out how to make these angles because I'm not that good like I already mentioned. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw right through the middle of this four by four and then have them overlap. And then to make it look pretty, when it's overlapping, I will take a chalk line and my track saw and create a nice clean cut so it'll follow the profile. 
it's nice to know that there's a solution for something. Might not be the best, but it's a solution. Oh, I gotta stay hydrated. You know, I just realized, don't have my chalk line. Second thing I don't bring, I didn't bring my track saw. All right, guys, it's the end of day one, a solid five hour work day. At the end of the day, we are so far between the four by fours, the two by sixes, and the two by fours, and screws are 440 bucks in the pocket. In case some of you guys haven't guessed it yet, uh, we are on site building at my in-laws property in McCall. It's about 100 miles outside of Boise where I live, about a two and a half hour drive. Uh, today's day one, we're done with it. I'm anticipating being three day project, about five hour a day thing. So uh, we'll see what tomorrow looks like. All right, it's day two, we got it. Before we head back to the cabin, we need to pick up some waterproofing stuff. Lowe's has the stuff that we need. Let's go find it. All right, flex seal clear. This is the stuff that we need. Here we go, another road trip back to the cabin. Hey, it's day number two today. I uh, picked up more supplies. Uh, I got my stain stuff and I have my clear coat stuff. This is Flex Seal Clear. Uh, that'll secure from all the UV rays and water. Also bought rope for the kids to climb on. All in all, about 175 bucks in for today's project. But first things first, we need to trim the mess that we made yesterday. Finally bought my chalk, let's get to work. Got one chalk line. Got our second chalk line. Now we slice. Now the reality is I don't need to do this part, but I brought the tool with me and it's just so much fun to do it. Uh, this is a carving disc we just added to our angle grinder. And uh, we're gonna blend this, uh, this little radius right here because uh, we're extra. It just, it makes everything look like it's one piece somewhat and it kind of gives a little texture, kind of like a rock formation would. And if you don't like it, I'd love to hear all about it. Stain time. Now, if you've been watching the channel long enough, you know there's basically two approved stains that Irina uh, granted us with. Number one is what? Fruit root. Number two, weathered oak. I don't know if you knew that or not, but weathered oak it is. It's a proven one that nobody's gonna hate it. We're not gonna go dark. We're gonna go a little bit towards the gray side. And I'm gonna smother this sucker with a paintbrush and then a rag. Should be fast. Oh, hey, you must be wondering, how am I able to stretch so high in these work shorts? These are Ariat M4 rebar sh work shorts. They're just Dura Switch canvas, you know, stuff that lets you switch. Anywho, link in the description. Trust me, you're gonna like these shorts. And they look good. Look at this. You can't do that in regular shorts. Do those look like green clouds to you? I don't like this. We, we have to get in time to waterproof this. This is not looking good. Ah, crap. You think it'll ruin it?
So it did end up raining. Uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna last long. Um, so far, maybe a couple of minutes into it. It's already looked like it's dying off. Maybe the clouds are passing, hopefully. My hopes is that this side, which is the most vulnerable side, the thickest side, uh, had enough to dry so there's protection. And uh, hopefully this stuff will evaporate quickly so we can actually water seal. All right, well, that's the last of it. I think I got it all covered. It took me exactly two cans of stain, which is a lot. I've never done so much. Now, it's not staining exactly like I thought it would. Irina likes it different. It's not sanded all the way well. I only, I skipped 80 grit. I just went to lightly on 120 just to even it out. So once this dries in the next, I don't know, hour, I'm gonna lightly sand it with 120 just to lighten it up a bit, and then we'll start waterproofing. Everything is dry. I think we're ready to start weatherproofing this thing. So we're using Flex Seal Liquid. I've used this stuff before on an RV camper roof, and it worked perfect. It's basically liquid rubber in a can. That way it'll seal everything. And the nice thing is because it is rubberized, it'll give them grip when they climb. It says here, Flex Seal Liquid is resistant to rain, snow, sun, and hail, air, moisture, UV degradation, extreme temperature, and natural weathering. Sounds like exactly what we need for an outdoor playground. Sometimes you have to improvise what you're used to open a can. Now, uh, we have to thoroughly stir this thing, and the cool thing is we could brush it on, we could roll it on, and uh, we're gonna do both. So what's nice about using Flex Seal Clear on this kind of specific project, and I'm not just saying that, it's, um, it's UV resistant and it's waterproof and all that stuff. And I like I already mentioned that, but for the outdoor project, most of the time people just use like clear coat. Well, clear coat's not gonna withstand with UV, so it's gonna deteriorate. And when water hits it, it'll deteriorate as well. So with this, you don't have to get the pressure treated lumber because it's expensive and it's not aesthetically appealing, like you can't stain it. So you can use regular lumber, which is a little more inexpensive, and you can make it prettier and nicer. Oh, 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 spilling it. <sighs> My shoulder hurts. I wish they had this in like a bed liner spray for a truck, so then you can just shoot it all at once. Uh-oh. I think I just rolled a bug into the Flex Seal Clear. Should I take him out? Fine, I'll take him out. I don't want to get destroyed saying, you hate bugs. I don't hate bugs. I just don't like them. Guys, we just came inside to get a quick bite to eat at the cabin. Look, that's a bear. He's huge. Let me flip my phone over. Look at him. He's giant. Just walking up the freaking path. Yo. Right next to the playground. It's just on the other side. So every once in a while, there's a negative Nancy in the comment section that ruins the party for everybody. So I'm gonna beat them to it. In case there's one or two smart out there who are like, oh, what's gonna happen when it's rubberized and you need to refinish it, sand it. You can't sand rubber. True, I know exactly what to do. In 10, 20, maybe even 30 years if we're lucky and I need to refinish this, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna burn it to the ground because even if I didn't use this product, I would still never sand up this playground. I'll just build a new one. Now let's go back to having fun again. Uh, we're gonna let this thing dry before we start installing the climbing rope, but in the meantime, let me show you the sauna that I built two years ago and we'll do a little update on it. So this is the shed that I converted two years ago into a real sauna. Let me show you inside. Of course, the neighbors decided to mow the lawn as we're doing this. So in the sauna, I put this wall up uh, to have like a little changing room. This is where the magic happens, benches, Everything works perfectly. It's roughly 10 by 10 all together. Um, 
everything is tongue and groove. So even though there's a little bit of expansion and contraction, no issues whatsoever, well insulated, retains heat very well. There is one thing though, I might have done differently just based off people's recommendation, but it's still not wrong. So what some of the sauna makers specifically in Sweden will do is at the bottom, um, behind somewhere next to the heater, they'll put a little vent, something small, and then they'll put another one on top. And what that allow is air circulating from in to out. Um, basically as hot air rises to the top and cooler air is the bottom, the majority of the hot heat you'd have to sit on the bench and if you want to cool down, go up below. It works well with kids or people who don't tolerate sauna as well. But if we had that there, we'd have a little convection, better distribution of heat. But I like the fact that if you want to really turn up the heat, go on top. If you want to stay out of the kitchen, go down below and chill out. The sauna has actually been heating up maximum to 200. I like to do 185 in like 20 minute intervals. But it's my own preference. Let's go back to see how our playground is looking and see the stuff is dry. I'm marking every foot and I got about 10 feet. I'm not going to do the very tippy top where I'm going to drill a, a half inch hole all the way through and feed three eighths inch ropes. I like to do half inch rope, but I couldn't find any half inch rope. So we'll do three eighths and I'm going to feed it through running from this side to that side in a zigzag fashion so the kids can climb up to it. A little more challenging, but also it'll be like aesthetically cool. I've never been in the Boy Scouts, so I never really learned any knots. No, like part of one, I think. I don't know what it's called. All I know is I've pulled car with cars with this knot. Maybe a good idea would be to put a knot on top of the knot. Ah. Huh. Okay. That'll do it. We need some better solutions for feeding. I present to you the needle and thread solution. Is this crocheting? Am I crocheting right now? So this rope is rated for 295 pounds and I am 215 pounds. I could stand on it, but I'm not gonna risk breaking anything before the kids have a turn at it. I've also been a little too optimistic how much rope I got. Need a little bit more rope. Day three, back on site. Today, we're gonna do a lot of the hardware. These are the grips for climbing, like any rock climbing wall would have. I got these on Amazon. They were 35-ish bucks. Uh, they look like they're pretty simple. I've never installed them before, but uh, it looks like we're just gonna have to drill holes and uh, screw in the big Allen bolts. Because I only have about 25 of these grips, I wanna be strategic enough to even them all out. Last thing I wanna do is run out of them and have a section that looks empty. So I'm gonna mark them with tape. Trusty old tape trick. Let's get to drilling. Maybe it's a good idea we're reading directions here, but look. We're even using the right drill for this job. What's up, Ryobi? All right, that's actually the hard part. You know, make sure I don't repeat the colors. I don't want to look like an idiot in front of children. Uh, now we just gotta secure these clamps on the backside, pound them in so they catch with these little teeth, and then we'll use the Allen's key to uh, secure them tightly. Now that we got the back locking plates installed, this is the pipe that we're gonna give ourselves carpet tunnel, voluntarily, because we have to crank down 50 of these big lag bolts using uh, this little Allen key. Exciting. Oh, I'm done with this Allen key. I don't want to touch another Allen key for a while. 
I was debating if I want to have a tire swing inside um, or something else. And I realized something else would be better than a tire swing. Reason why, if you're watching the kids play here, perfect opportunity for an adult to be comfortable. Maybe have a beverage while watch the kids are on this playground. So, picked up on Amazon one of these hammock chairs. Super comfy. I'm excited about it, actually. I'm excited to watch the kids play and have fun and sit in my chair in the shade. The hammock seat's about 45 bucks. Uh, it came with a tiny little chain, but because of our structure here, we need something longer. So I spent another 12 bucks or so on four foot long chain. It already comes with this mounting bracket. I have to drill a 5 16 hole through the top and then screw this inside of it. And uh, it should keep me from breaking my butt on the ground. Took the perfect time to forget my, sun my safety glasses. Maybe a little too low. Let's raise it up a little bit. Yeah. We'll be scraping our butt against the ground. Hey, it's actually holding a 215 pound person. Watch you go <laughs> break my back. This is nice. Especially when it's low to the ground. I could get used to this. Children, children. Your boy got more rope, baby. We got more rope. Now, I'm not quite done yet. In fact, I kind of changed my mind. Uh, this, though, he could hold weight. I don't think the kids are gonna climb it as much. It, they still might, but I wanted to actually give it almost like a double meaning. So, I got some solar-powered, uh, why did I say like that, solar-powered, solar-powered uh, string lights that'll hang all the way down, and then we have solar-powered beacon light that'll sit on top, kind of like one of those beacons when the airplanes fly in so they know how low it is. I think it'll be like a cool little added feature that will make evening hangs here pretty cool. Between all these solar lights, I'm so far 80 bucks in. Kind of steep, but it'll make my life easier because I don't have to run power here anymore. So, the problem I'm having with these strand lights, they're, they're, they're not very long, and I'll buy two packages, and ideally I'd like to do a zigzag, but they don't connect, so there'll just be a bunch of charging ports. Kyle just made a great point. Uh, what I can do since it's short, wrap it around the chain, and it'll be symmetrical and useful, and it'll work. It's a great idea, Kyle. You're always up to something good. I swear, these lawnmower guys are here every time I'm here. Here's a plan of attack. Cut the stem down to three inches. By the way, this is the stuff you put into your lawn. Take my half inch bit, drill a hole three inches long, and shove it in there. It's already turned on, so we just have to wait for the battery to charge. All right, it's roughly close to almost nine o'clock in the summertime. Um, all the kids are out right there doing a bonfire. I'm sitting here testing this thing out. Lights are glowing, vibe is great. Awesome build. All right, so original budget for this playground build was $600. And let's see how we did. The lumber was $423. Screws were $51. Stain and waterproofing was $131. And all the necessary application for those is $43. The climbing grips were $37. Rope was $50. Lights were $43. And the hammock was $48, making our grand total for this project $826, causing this budget to be over by $226. But we're very happy how things turned out and we're excited to have the kids make many memories on this playground.
Hey, thanks for sticking around watching another video. It means so much to me. If you're brand new to the channel, make sure before you leave, hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you know when these videos come out. Connect with me on my social media. All the links will be in the description below as well as the merch section that helps support this channel and connect with me on my Patreon where we have hour long extended versions of these videos that don't make it to these 18, 20 minute clips. Tune out this week. See you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye.